Yeah, welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone on this Thursday. We're bowling things off with cricket. The West Indies will be playing for pride and World Test Championship points when they take on England in the third and final test of the Richards Botham series at Edgbaston in Birmingham starting on Friday. England hold a winning 2 0 lead in the series. And having regained the Richards Botham trophy, their captain, Ben Stokes, says he wants his team to remain focused as they target a clean sweep of the series. Here's what Ben said. Well, 2 nil up with a very good all-round team performances. So, yeah, it's a pretty easy decision to stick with the same 11 as he confirms the 11 England will use. And, yeah, I think we want to wrap up the series and hopefully take it 3 nil. Ruthless is always a word that I think is just based on outcome. But, yeah, we want to win 3 nil. Meanwhile, the West Indies captain, Craig Brathwet says despite being down 2-0 in the series, there is a lot to play for. I mean, it's a build-up. We have five tests remaining for the year. Uh, you know, test championship points still at stake. Uh, so, we, I mean, we have a lot to play for, and, and that's my thing to the boys. You know, we're still in the te test championship running. Uh, you know, obviously, we're looking for points as well. It's all about fighting. And I think once we continue to create that kind of attitude around, around this test team, um, it will... It will there will be growth, and that's what we're after. All wrong, we didn't put it together as yet. Um, obviously, we batted well at Trent Bridge. We didn't bat well in the second innings. And we bowled well in, in, in pieces. Um, I think collectively, obviously, we drop chances would happen. But I think our groupings as a bowling unit weren't as, as they should. And I think once we get that percentage up, you know, we'll be able to create more chances and at least be able to, you know, stop the, the flow of runs on both sides of the wicket. Yeah, and our cricket correspondent Fazir Mohammed is in Birmingham to cover the Test Series. And we now join him via Zoom. Faz, uh, we just heard Craig Brathwaite saying that they have got to increase their percentages and play more consistently good all-around cricket. What are the odds of the West Indies avoiding this sweep? Not particularly good if you, if you really look at how things went, particularly in that, in that second match. I mean, the West Indies... If you really think about it, Lance, if you ask any West Indian fan, if you were to look at the situation, 61 without loss, chasing 385 in the final session of day four, would you have taken that going into the test match? I'm sure 95% of people would have taken that because it meant the West Indies were in with a fighting chance and had fought their way through after the debacle of the first test. But we saw the collapse. We saw the capitulation in, that, in that, that second test, but in just one session. And that is the concern. So, so, so really, the, 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 well, what you're hearing from Craig Brathwood are really shallow platitudes. Not that he means it to be shallow, but what more can he say? I mean, saying that, you know, uh, dropping catches, these things will happen. Really? Uh, are we supposed to accept catches being dropped to the extent that when they were dropped, for example, on the first day, of the second test match in Nottingham and a couple dropped in the second innings as well. Are we supposed to accept it that these things happen? I mean, I understand the point that he's making, that there's a lot to play for, you're playing test cricket, but, but I think that they, they, there's too much of a, of a softly, softly sort of perspective. I understand you don't want to be reading the riot act publicly and all of that, and I fully appreciate that. But the, 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 the manner in, in which the message is being transmitted publicly seems to suggest, to suggest well, there's really nothing to worry about to any significant degree. Yeah, and as uh, England captain Ben Stokes used the word ruthless in his pre-match comments, and um, he has said that they're going for the, for the sweep on, on the back of good ranking news this week for the England team that Joe Root is closing in on, Kane Williamson, for the number one spot. And Harry Brook, who I have a lot of time for, is now number three in, in the world. So England riding high and have every, every reason to be as confident as their, as their captain is suggesting. Absolutely. And, and indeed, ruthless is the word. I mean, I mean you, you would expect now that, that England will say, look, you know, we, we, we have the, these fellas down, we're going to wipe them out. This is not about, you know, thinking about ashes and, and whatever. It's about playing who's in front of you. And it's just too bad that it happens to be the West Indies. And, and as I said before, when, when we spoke in the aftermath of the, 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 the second test match and some of the comments that have been made, which have this tone of being patronising, I would be happy if England come out in a ruthless manner against the West Indies and the West Indies are able to respond in a proper manner. Because I certainly don't want a situation 
where even if the media and a few observers are feeling sorry for the West Indies, it's not the England's team's business to feel sorry for the West Indies. It is their business to play whoever is in front of them and play to the best of their ability. And if the match ends on the fourth afternoon, if it ends on the second evening, so be it. Yes, so be it, Faz. And as a result of that and their confidence, England have named an unchanged 11. And we have to juxtapose that with the West Indies side that we've gone through illnesses. So Gurukesh Moti was out because he was sick. He's now back in. Kevin Sinclair will be missing this time because of an injury picked up in that second test. We're still not sure. I read a report on ESPN earlier today about Shamar Joseph. It seems as if now he's sick. So we're going up against an unchanged winning side when we have our own off-the-field issues. Yeah, and there, there are a couple of things there because once more, we don't get a lot of detail. We, 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 we read about it. I read the same report that you read suggesting that maybe Shamar Joseph has gotten the flu, uh, whether it's from Gurukesh Moti or anybody else in the squad. And also, we, we learned during the course of the week that uh, Mikhail Lowy's brother, Jeremiah, who came into the squad to replace the injured Kimar Roach, is now himself injured and his place taken by Akeem Jordan, who's playing league cricket here in England. And if indeed, if it happens, we wish him the best. We hope he does well, because, of course, he was on a tour of Australia uh, about a year and a half ago, didn't get the chance to play, went to South Africa as well, didn't get the chance to play. So now here's an opportunity for, for him again, if it arises. So so really, n nothing wrong with making changes. And indeed, one is enforced with the, the, the fractured arm sustained by Kevin Sinclair on, on that devastating final evening for the West Indies at Trent Bridge. So the, the change even if they are enforced, it's up to those players to step up and take that level of consistency to another degree. Because as they would have seen, they improved significantly from Lords, but it still wasn't enough. The Wesley's lost by 141 runs, which would re be a reminder of the yawning gap between themselves and teams like England. England are not the top team in world cricket. They, they are at the bottom in the point standings of, of the ICC Test Championship. But England are always generally strong at home. So there's a lot of work to be done there. And rather than being apologetic and trying to water down glaring shortcomings, it's about the West Indies owning up to those errors and trying their very best to eliminate them or minimize them in the next match, which is starting tomorrow. Yeah, and you mentioned Akeem Jordan. He has played 19 first-class matches, Faz, um, picked up 67 wickets. Uh, two of those um, came with five wicket hauls. Uh, he's getting into this third test where, you know, not a lot of pressure would be on him, especially because we've already lost the series. Um, how important is it that Akeem Jordan recognizes that this opportunity can determine his place moving forward and that he really just comes in and seizes the opportunity? And, and indeed, I, I, I kind of beg to differ, Mariah, because you said it's not under any pressure because the series is already lost to nil. But uh, Craig Bradford made an important point. One, yeah, it points. They, they are test championship points, but also it's a test match. Yeah. Also, you're playing for the West Indies, and it should mean something. So, so therefore, if he does get the opportunity, and if it happens to be so, yeah. he'll, he'll be nervous, he'll be anxious, he'll want to deliver. It, it wouldn't matter to him that the West Indies are 2 nil down in the series as well. It shouldn't matter to him. It shouldn't matter to anyone else in the team because they should be looking to go out there and give off their best for their own personal pride, first and foremost, for their own personal levels of professionalism. And also, of course, for the West Indies, which is still supposed to mean something, even with all the franchise cricket going on. I mean, even right now, the tournament has started. It started on Tuesday and continues even with the test match getting underway. We've got the Olympics getting underway. So there are a lot of distractions happening all the time. But that really should not matter whether it's an Akeem Jordan, whether it's anyone else coming into the team, if they get the chance, because it's, as I say again, at the, sound of, yeah. uh, the risk of sounding repetitive, it should mean something still to play test match cricket for the West Indies. Yeah, you speak about him, and I think about instantly Mikhail Louis. There was a lot of buzz about him coming into the competition, everybody expecting him to, you know, again, step up and deliver with the runs. He didn't have a bad performance, as in, 
um, terrible when you compare him to the rest of the players, but you know, still didn't get the best out of him when it comes to what we've seen from him previously in um, dif in a different level of cricket. Um, he's yet to pass 27, so I think a lot of eyes will be on him as well, Faz. Absolutely, and, and as you said, uh, excelled at, at the, the regional first class level, but the fact that that he struggled to get past 27, as you said, just re-emphasizes the gap between test match cricket and the status of all first-class cricket. Now, of course, in our heyday, in the late 70s, early 80s, as I was chatting with some English colleagues uh, during the course of the Trent Bridge test match, Barbados versus Jamaica was the equivalent of a test match in the context of the quality of the cricket that is played. That is not the case anymore. And therefore, Mikhail Louis coming into this series, I don't think there was the expectation that he would just pick up runs very easily because I don't think anyone seriously expected that he would automatically make that transition. We would have hoped for it. We would hope that, that he could really push on and, and the, the belief is and, and the, we would all want him uh, as West Indians for him to push on certainly in this final test match with test matches to come next month at home against South Africa and then in November against Bangladesh as well, also in the Caribbean. He, like anyone else, has to recognize that there's a significant step up. And if he wants to be someone who, who matters or who means something or who will be remembered as a West Indies Test cricketer, he has to step up his game. And if there's no one around him who is helping him in doing that, he needs to find it from somewhere because he can't allow himself, like so many others as we've seen, to settle for mediocrity and averaging 20-something. That's not good enough. Yeah, and as you just referenced the home test series, two matches against the South Africans next month, I believe in Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago. Um, looking at the roster that coach Andre Coley has with him in England at the moment, are there any players, because this test series is just weeks away, are there any players who aren't in the current setup that you would like to see um, being called up for the South Africa series? I'm not even sure if Kimar Roach will be fit for that because he was unable to play in this current series. It, it really depends in, in many ways, Lance, as to who is available, who wants to make himself available. Uh, uh, when we look at uh, the, the, the runs uh, the, that are scored in regional competition, the wickets that are taken, there, there really aren't too many automatic options. Uh, Tijnor and Chandapol comes to mind immediately. I remember making making the comment for, on the record on Sportsmax that I was surprised that he was omitted for the England tour in the same way that I was surprised that Justin Greaves was omitted. Because I, I thought that even if Chandapol struggled in those two test matches, he had done enough in his first year of test cricket to be allowed a bad series. But OK, uh, so that might be an option to consider as well. The, the thing, Lance, is not so much that there are players banging on the door of test match selection, but the ones who are there and indeed the ones who are aspiring to be there, are they really producing the, the, the outstanding numbers on a regular basis that gives you the belief that if given the opportunity, they will be able to step up? Because we see it happening in other jurisdictions. We see it with England. We see it with so many other, other nations that their players step up. I don't just shine brightly once and then the, the bulb goes out they're able to continue. And we need to see that happen in our cricket. But uh, again, it comes back to the standard of our cricket. So yet to answer your question, uh, specifically, I don't see anyone as an automatic option at this stage. Yeah, and Faz, before you go, a non-West Indies question here, because I saw Stuart Broad in his embryonic stages as a, as a TV commentator, and he, he said something, I think it was on the fourth day or, or during the coverage, that... Um, he has a lot of time for Joe Root, who he thinks is the best England batsman ever. And he actually said he knows Alistair Cook would hate to hear that, but he thinks Joe Root is the best England batsman of all time. Uh, he is 14 runs away from surpassing Bran Lara to be number seven on the all-time test scoring list. How, how good is Joe Root? And is Stuart Broad right? Best England batsman of all time? Joe Root is... is one of the best. Stuart Broad is right as far as, 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 acknowledging, as acknowledging him, but I think he's dead wrong to automatically go that way because that is that is what you call the curse of recent sealants because he's played with Joe Root. How much does he know of a Jeff Boycott? How much does he know of a Len Hutton? 
How much does he know of a Kenny Barrington? How much does he know of, of a Jack Hobbs and a Herbert Sutcliffe and, and, and those players? How much does he know uh, in appreciation of, of a Graham Gooch, for example, taking on the West Indies and scoring a famous 151 not out at Headingley? We hear these things all the time. Michael Vaughan had the temerity to suggest that after Ben Stokes got a double hundred in Cape Town, that, that he has to be the greatest all-rounder. He said, I, well, I've never really seen Gary Sobers, but this has to be the greatest, which speaks to a level of not, not just blind, blind, how should I say, blind loyalty to those that you are familiar with, but reinforces this attitude that if it hasn't happened in your lifetime, it hasn't happened at all, which makes no sense whatsoever. And, and that is why there has to be some pushback, not, not to embarrass uh, these outstanding players who are now commentators, but just to remind them that the game started long before their lives. <laughs> Good point there, Faz. I think a lot of times when people are making those comments, they should just preface what they are saying uh, during my time or, or, you know, in my experience of watching of watching sports. I hear this... you on that, but they don't. They don't do that. They <laughs> yes. don't preface it. They yes. say this is the greatest player ever. And, and they say definitively, and, and we assume because they have such outstanding records, they have to be right when they're talking foolishness. All right, Faz, <laughs> as, as, as outspoken as, as, as usual. Thanks a lot, Faz. And let's hope Thank the Windies can do something good in this test match over the weekend at Edgbaston. Thanks, Faz. Let's hope so. Take care. Yeah, we go to break. We still have a lot more to come on the Sports Match Zone. We have a football segment on the other side of the break, I think.